Welcome back to the Combat Learning Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Peacock, 4th degree black belt in Taekwondo and a martial arts skill training specialist. If you're new to the show, please sign up to the Combat Learning Newsletter at combatlearning.com slash newsletter. I'll send you cheat sheets on how to transform your drills into maximum skill building games and get you up to speed on the science of motor skill learning for martial arts. Plus, you'll never miss a show. Go to combatlearning.com slash newsletter to get those resources now. In this final installment of the three-part episode with Emil, Emil reveals his approach to game design. Then we move quickly into the ways to individualize sessions to each learner, including some principles of session design. Overall, Emil keeps the generic conditioning exercise out of skill training. Strength and conditioning is something you can do on your own time with coaches specialized to that. In Muay Thai class, you come to practice Muay Thai. Lastly, Emil and I discuss the injury landscape now that he's ecological. If you're excited to jump in, hit the subscribe button on your podcatcher and enjoy the show. And so you talked about designing games. I want to I want to get into that. So how do you approach designing games? Uh, so I think a lot of it comes down to uh, you uh, like using your experience. You usually know uh, how a beginner is going to look and what they're going to struggle with. So you kind of the beginning aspect of a semester is, is I think you shouldn't call it easy, but it's it's a little bit easier to plan. So maybe like oh, they need an introduction to kicking. They need an introduction to punching. Uh, but after a certain period, I think you need to kind of look at the group and you need to have that. This is where experience, I think, in the sport or expertise in the sport really comes into play of seeing the group, noticing like, OK, I'm seeing people have struggling with this or I see people avoiding this. Can we spend time in this situation? Can we develop these skills so people start becoming comfortable and and they basically get the all aroundness? Uh, or and again, you know, we can talk with people. Like, hey, what do you feel like you need to work on, or what are you feeling is is a struggle? Oh, I want to explore this. Oh, yeah, that's a yeah. We'll see if we can get into that, and then you write it down <laughs> and you start yeah. planning around that. So it's I I think it's important to to utilize your experience, but also you need to be adaptable. You need to look at the group. What does the group need? Because that's why why we're there. We're there to mm-hmm. help the group. We're not there to, to to put our plan into action. It's basically the people have to formulate the plan. But I think it's it's important also to set the a, a couple of principles. Like these are my rules. But I also think it's important you that you're able to break those rules at any point where, when it's necessary. When you say like, oh, this isn't working. I have to change it up. How do I change oh, yeah. it up? Yeah. Yeah, now that's the actual constraints lot approach right there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that that's how it's supposed to work. If it if you put together, it's okay to put together. I mean, you're supposed to put together a plan for a session. You're yeah. supposed to have an idea of what you want to get out of it because the design is going to be better. However, just because it makes the design better doesn't mean that the team that you're working with at yeah. that given time is going to respond that well to it. So. You have to look at what's going on on, you have to pay attention to what's going on on the mat. Yeah. And then, all right, man. Okay. Maybe we need to, we need to, we need to like adjust some constraints here because yeah. people, are, it's just, we're struggling today. That was actually what happened uh, last night. I talked about that. Are we having an amazing session? But I had basically planned out what we were going to do, what games we were going to play. And then I noticed, mm-hmm. like, I, I don't recognize a lot of these people. So I asked the person versus the front desk, like, hey, are, are there a lot of new people here? They're like, yeah, there's a couple who have signed up. There's like six or seven new people. I'm like, we can't really do the games I play plan then. They don't have that information we we're building on. So we had to change some things on the fly. We, we kept basically the same principles, but we had to change uh, the scaling kind of of the game. And yeah. we got this amazing session out of it. And it was really like fun for me as well to feel like, oh man, I was able to adjust on the fly. I was able to use this, this kind of new knowledge uh, that I've had uh, with the ecological approach and, and, and scale these games to 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 a level where we were able to work. And maybe it won't always work like this, but it worked out this time and I'm, I was really happy about it. So it's yeah. always good to have that new information as well. And 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 it's really important to to, to look up new information. So you have that that experience bank to kind of pull from and 
I, someone asked me a couple of weeks ago, like, oh, are you nervous holding a session? I'm like, no, not anymore. I know too much now. <laughs> there's yeah. so few there's nothing that really surprises me anymore. I've done this yeah. for too long. Yeah, that, that experience is really important as a coach and that um that base of knowledge is, is important yeah. too. Yeah. You can't people get sometimes get confused, like, well, if I'm not teaching techniques and giving details all the time, mm, mm. then what is my place as a coach? Yeah. Well, everything else. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're the guy. Exactly. <laughs> you're the you're the architect of of the session. You're the one that's asking questions and you're the therapist. You're the yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like you're you're just you're literally everything else you can possibly a coach can possibly be except yeah. the uh the poke decks yeah. of, of <laughs> exactly. information of, of how to do the perfect round kick. But yeah, uh, <laughs> uh people will probably get upset that I just called it. <laughs> In, in traditional instructors, Pokedexes, but you yeah. know, I like to I like to throw shade where I can. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I I think this is important. I I was uh, at a at a convention uh, this week where they talked about the the football team in Sweden, and the coach he said he wanted a debate about the future of football, and one of the journalists there said. Who the hell requests a debate? You start a debate. You tell them something is wrong, and people have to respond to you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was. I that was also a thing. I I really enjoy like Greg Souders personality, and that kind of yes. draw me in. When someone pisses people off, other either they're being a troll, or they're being really stupid, or they're saying something that really infuriates people, and that yes. really gets me. I yeah, really love. One it. Of, yeah, you have to be able to discern which one is. <laughs> Either you're saying something that's true and it hits home. Yeah, it's making people very insecure about it, or you're just being yeah. mean. Um, <laughs> sometimes they if, get mixed, but <laughs> yeah. If you tell someone like, "Oh, I don't know uh, that haircut is it new?" Yeah, that he really hits home. Yes. You know, that's the worst <laughs> insult you can give someone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the haircut. <laughs> <laughs> so, with with the games in mind, um, yeah. Well, I, you might answer this question. So I was, I was <laughs> interesting. So you put your games together. How do you, how do you structure the progression of a session? Uh, so usually I try to keep a theme basically going. So mm. if we want to talk about last night, well, I wanted them to basically f- kind of channel their, let's call it their expression of Thai boxing for movement. I wanted them to move their feet to to play around with positioning, but if we're, we're going to talk about all this. It's going to take a long time and they're probably not going to understand it. So instead it was okay, we need to defend ourselves against punches. So let's the first game, we're going to just move. We're just going to try to move out of the way of the punches. Second game, we're going to use our hands that but always remind them like hey, keep your feet moving. Keep the keep this in mind. Division, balance, distance. Always have this in the back of your head. Work with this, and then we got these beautiful like positions that people started working with. So I think it's really important. I've started doing this this semester actually. Is is writing down before sessions like this is what I want to see. So I write down. I want to see them exist in defensive positions. I want them to do this because even if afterwards uh, I can look at that and say they didn't fulfill what I wanted. Why? I have a result and I can I can I can utilize that result. Just because your plan fails doesn't mean you don't get anything out of it. Now you have a result. Mm-hmm. It's basically like how, how science works. You yeah. do an experiment, you get a result, and you, you pull information from that result. And that's really important, I think, as coaching is you have to be okay with like winning and losing. It's it's nice to win, but when you lose, you need to understand like, ah, what went wrong? And and where what did it go wrong? What can we do differently? What what we can learn from winning, we can learn from losing. And it's important to always keep that in mind. That Even if it doesn't go your way, doesn't yeah. mean you fail. It's yeah, when you absolutely. completely give up, that's when you fail. Yeah, people. the people's pedagogy is very rigid. And, yeah. oh man, the class is just not getting it. So I'm not yeah. explaining it the right way. I didn't explain it in the perfect way. So <laughs> yeah, a, exactly. one of my, my first jujitsu instructor, Oh, dude. When I, so you, you start, you're like, you're talking about how they started with Baron Bolo. Day yeah. one of jujitsu for me was X guard from bottom <laughs> in the gi. So in the no gi, it's a little bit simpler. In gi, there's all these different grips and stuff. And step one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And, uh, 
the coach was like, he, he, he's, he's a, he has a traditional education background. So yeah. he's not, he has not like he has no pedagogy at all. Like no. He has no training. Yeah. He was a, he was a credential teacher in South Carolina at some point, but he comes from a, a, a just unrelentingly traditional approach. And so he, he gets, he gets uh, upset, not at us per se. He gets upset because, well, I, you know what? It's my fault. I didn't, I didn't teach it right. Yeah. Uh, and so we go back and spend another 15 minutes of, of lecture <laughs> on yeah. the one technique that, ever, well, the problem with the technique is that it's super complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's the sort of thing that you see in competition because somebody uniquely discovered it for themselves. Yeah. Working from that position, just exploring from that position. And now we think because this guy can do this, this uh, really cool, strange move that he discovered that I can therefore teach the principles and just replicate it. Mm. And occasionally you get people, you get people that replicate, they, that's because they play around in that move, that yeah. position a lot, not yeah. because they memorized all the whatever and they do it right. Um, no. And it's just, it's just not how it works. You can't, people are just trying to teach everybody else's unique game. Yeah. And that's why you're frustrated. And that's why the class isn't getting it. It's just way too, it's just too many steps. It's too, it's too complicated. I, I, the, the, the Baron Bolo class and, and the beginners I mentioned, they had a, such a beautiful way of, of looking at it because uh, when they said, oh, we don't understand anything and the coach wanted to explain it even further. So he wanted <laughs> to break it down like step by step. So he said, oh, I'm grabbing here and I'm pulling him. And when he I pull him, he puts his leg here. And the beginner's like, why does he put his leg there? And the teacher's like, because he has to. It's like, yeah, but they don't know that. <laughs> they haven't <laughs> felt that. They don't understand why, why he has to put his foot there. And it was yeah, they've never a, felt it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They don't have any idea what you're talking about. And it yeah. was just such a, such a beautiful like snapshot of like why I, I, I don't believe it works to, to teach that way. Because yeah. you're, you're using information that you understand, but they maybe don't. They don't have any anything to, to, to hook the knowledge onto. Or to attach to in what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, so many times I've been taught a technique, and it just oh, you have to put your body here. You have to put this here. You have to put it there because if you don't, this is going to happen. But I never understood how to do it until I felt the energy. Yeah. And even then, and feeling yeah. the energy, my body, my body takes over. Yeah, because there's a task I'm trying to do, and that is to keep the person's head down for yeah. something, you know, to to pin or whatever. And it, it it always ends up different than what I was taught, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and and if you end up in a position that you were taught, you're there for literally one second until you have Absolutely. to adjust. Yeah, because you're there, and then okay, now they're wedging the elbow in, they're pushing me yeah. away. What am I? What you can't just you know just muscle your way back down. Yeah. If they've got the wedge in, you know, I, I don't care what any Brazilian says. Yeah. He, he, you know, you can't just overpower it with good leverage. Some no. the guy, if a guy's bigger than you, he gets his elbow in. You're gonna have to move to north south or somewhere else. Yeah. Because so been, yeah. it's done. Yeah. Like you're done. <laughs> yeah. So I've been doing jujitsu like this year. It's the first time I've been doing it like serious and trying to do do it every week. Yeah. And. My game has evolved really uh, strangely because we have one hour of technique and then we have one hour of sparring. So we basically have like two one hour classes. Wow. And I tried to go to technique and I found it really boring. So I only started yeah. going to the sparring. But the way my game has evolved is I have no guard whatsoever. And I let people mount me because that's where I spend the most time. So I know a little bit what to do there. Yeah. So basically, my entire game has become holding people down and letting them mount me if it ends up in the other way. Yeah. It's a really dumb way of 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 doing <laughs> grappling, but it's yeah. the way basically that I I spend time in being mounted or have someone taking my back. So people are like, "Oh, you're really good at uh, defending the back." I'm like, "Thanks. It's the only position I end up in." 
<laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah. <laughs> My, uh, it's a little harder for me to defend the back in um, no gi, but when I was in yeah, gi yeah. as yeah. a white belt, dude, my <laughs> my defense was on point. Like even purple belts would be like, "You're really annoying from back." <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. It's because I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, because I weigh a hundred and four. Well, I mean, I'm heavier now, but back then I was yeah. like, yeah, I weigh a hundred and forty pounds. Yeah, and people can just throw me around from guard and take my back and literally do whatever they want. <laughs> yeah, uh, and so I have to be comfortable from there. <laughs> yeah, or, or as comfortable as you can be from there. So it's yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem with that is when you start making people frustrated with a good defense, they start getting rougher. Yeah, absolutely. And then you end up with a chiropractic session. <laughs> yeah, of the trying to. Pull your neck and body lock yeah. you and pull you apart and <laughs> yeah, different yeah, absolutely. Ways. yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, dude. Ego, it does, it's, yeah. hey guys, here's a secret: jujitsu does not kill your ego. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> here's a dirty secret: <laughs> <laughs> jujitsu does not kill your ego. <laughs> yeah, who would have funk it? <laughs> <laughs> so, what does what does a typical class look like you in terms of the phases? You like warm up games do you ever do do you have a certain designated time for free sparring so usually like a, the way we've been doing it or the way i've been doing it for quite some time now is that we try to get uh, basically the work done in an hour one thing we want to focus on and the last half an hour basically becomes like you a free half an hour of mm. hey explore different things and, and the way you want to play them but Usually, if I'm maybe working with an advanced group, I want to basically do the learning and basically the, the, the important bits of the class. I want to try to do that as early as possible when people are still fresh, when people are still, uh, you know, they haven't gotten, gotten bogged down with all the information they've been processing. So usually it's like, like maybe like 10 yeah roughly 10 minutes of warm-ups of different like warm-up games uh, and and that can depend also on the group maybe sometimes it's just like hey let's do something fun let's uh, let's play tag with a bunch of taggers and everyone has to run around like you did in gym class when you were younger just for just for to play around with it and or we might just like be like hey no no gear on let's spar let's just let's just get warm okay get a sweat going and then we can start working and then we move on to the theme, basically, of what do I want to to teach them, or what do I want to, what information do I want them to 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 act on, and, and we can start working from there. And and if we have several classes in a row, you know, we we might be like, hey, we're working this today. Uh, keep this in mind that we've been doing the last couple of weeks. And when you're working with advanced people, it's usually easier because they have a vast amount of experience to to mm -hmm. kind of formulate. And with beginners, I think you kind of need to explain uh, the, the the fundamental aspects like, hey, keep this in mind that the distance is still really important or you're trying to keep your balance, you're trying to keep your vision, th these things. So, And maybe we move into a bit of free sparring. It usually depends. If there's an advanced group or a mixed group, yeah, we usually move into a bit of sparring. And, and even then we might constrain it down to like, hey, we, we're doing three rounds, but we're doing two minutes of rest in between. So you get the chance to talk and, and rest up. And mm. basically, <clears throat> like people, <laughs> we joke about it, but we have almost like two separate camps. We have the, the intelligent camp and we have the fight club camp. <laughs> <laughs> and and I understand it's fun to spar and it's fun to 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 beat up your friends, essentially. Mm -hmm. But you're the hardest job is trying to get martial artists to think, I believe. I think yeah. Craig Jones said the hardest thing to do is teaching jiu-jitsu people to actually use their brains. <laughs> and, and I kind of keep that in mind. Like, hey, let's also think a little bit today. Let's work. Let's work this as well. And not only damage it, but also utilize what we have left to to figure out some problem and, and help each other grow. And, uh, but usually the last half hour is just like, Hey, balls to the walls, do what you want, but, uh, Hey, get tired if you want to, or, or play around if you want to, usually people get tired. So we don't need to do like, uh, okay, now it's, uh, strength and conditioning, sit ups, push up people, people do the sport. And as they get better at it, they do it at a higher pace and higher interval. So they get, they get tired. You don't mm -hmm. need to do the sit ups and stuff, man. Come on.
Yeah, yeah. Come on, people, pay, people pay you for Muay Thai. Yeah, pay absolutely. You for yeah, if they come to a class that's labeled Thai boxing or, or, or Jiu Jitsu, I'm assuming you're here for Muay Thai. I'm going to make that assumption. I don't know too much about you, but you should have basic reading comprehension by this point. I, I, I <laughs> yes. 15 to 30 <laughs> minutes of poorly chosen calisthenics. Oh, like guys. <laughs> like, you couldn't re like you couldn't watch one YouTube video on personal training. <laughs> like if it, yeah. if we were supposed to do some supplemental conditioning, you couldn't pick something better. Yeah. Than lemurs in a circle and 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 <laughs> you know it's just ugh, it's awful and it's it's, it's, it's absolutely all, awful. It also as a coach, it's super boring to watch. <laughs> yes, it's boring it's to do. Yeah, it's super boring to do. And just as I know when we, uh, I used to do it, like we used to do a drill we called the 10. So you did 10 punches, 10 hooks, 10 uppercuts, 10 kicks. And it was super boring to watch. So what I usually did was I went around and be like, ah, you can do it. In case of being like, uh, yeah. like uh, Rockies, coaches, uh, uh, great mm -hmm. lightning and crap thunder, blah, blah, blah. Basically to entertain myself, but I was to rally people. <laughs> but at the end, I'm like, this was really boring to watch. <laughs> yeah, this is just boring. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to well, watch did, this. I did a Muay Thai class where warm-up was uh, just skipping rope in shadow boxing for a long time. And I'm actually terrible at skipping ropes. It was, in, yeah. it was miserable and embarrassing, and I never did it again. Yeah. So I did, and, I did it for a month, and I was like, you know what? If, 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 if I have to endure... 30 minutes of of no Muay Thai yeah. to try and learn Muay Thai, then I just won't learn Muay Thai. No, absolutely. <laughs> and, and it's like, I, I, I had this kind of uh, thought, uh, I can't remember really when it was, but I was like, what can they do with me in the room? And what can't they do with me in the room? Absolutely. So yeah. they can do bag work, they can hit pads, they can skip rope, they can do calisth calisthenics without me. They don't need me to explain to them how to do a push up, or some do, but most people don't. But if you want to get task focused, you want to learn, uh, you want to know how, where to direct your intention and attention towards, then you may need me because I have a lot of experience in this. And I, I'm not some guru. I'm just some dude who loves this game and spent a lot of time doing it. So, like, I always tell them, hey, use me because you're not going to be the person who who wears, wears me out. I guarantee yeah. you that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So what are you noticing in regard to injuries? Are there more? Are there fewer of them? Are you just never really had that many injuries around in your day? Uh, usually when we do Muay Thai, we haven't had too many bad injuries the the worst injuries are usually like accidents like kicking an elbow or something like that mm -hmm. uh we we had the most unfortunate person uh come to our class two weeks ago he we were gonna do the 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 game of like getting to the back uh, of your opponent and the first step he took he sprained his ankle <laughs> uh, and that's probably the worst injury i've had uh, during my my classes uh, and i try to tell people that too because some people aren't used to getting kicked or punched. Like, hey, if something feels off or something hurts, like communicate that. Talk with each other. You don't have to prove to me that you're tough. I, I don't care. I literally don't care. Mm -hmm. It like it's the important thing is that you are in a position where you feel like you can learn and you can be comfortable. So yeah. If you're feeling unsafe or hurt, talk. Talk use your words. You have a mouth yeah. for a reason. Yeah. Look, you'll I trust that you will get tough. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to be super tough right now. So yeah, <laughs> life's tough enough as it is. You don't need to prove it to me. I... Exactly. Cool. So, are are you producing competitors? Does the ecological approach help you with that? How's, how's yeah that uh, with com competition? Uh, we have produced uh, some competitions, uh, not to a, a very high level yet, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, we've had some uh, unfortunate or some bad luck recently with some uh, sickness and some uh, work related stuff that had gotten into the way of uh, some of our more gifted fighters. Uh, uh -huh. They had to pick up more hours, so they haven't been able to commit this much time. Yeah. But we had, uh, we have uh, two people who I think, or I should say three people really. Uh, the more I think about it, the more names <laughs> pops up in my head. Yeah. But pe people who are, who are, 
basically finding ways to express their sport in a way that's very, very high level for the level of experience that they have. So when we have had people who have come visit our gym, they have been very complimentary of that. Instead of them being like, oh, what? They have only had one amateur fight? Really? Uh, so, so we're seeing skill development and basically we hope to get the chance to prove it. But there are some factors involved because uh, all of us uh, involved basically have a work life as well. And we have our mm-hmm. personal lives, of course, playing into it. So the the road to becoming that kind of full time professional is, or, or, or at competing at a high level is a bit difficult for us. But we're making strides and we hope that 2024 can be, be a better year for us than 2023 because it's in terms of competition, it's been a really poor, poor year. We got our last uh, competition. We got it canceled the day before the event. So, oh, wow. Yeah. We gotta yeah we'll, take... well, we'll check back in next year. And see <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Some unforeseen circumstances that have nothing to do with ecological training. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, like competition is, it's difficult as it is, really. Uh, right. So many things can go wrong and so many things have to go right for it to be a success. So we always try to keep that in mind when we compete as well, that, hey, even if the results doesn't go away, then, hey, let's look at it and let's use this as an opportunity to learn and, and grow from it. Because mm-hmm. in the end, that's what we're here for. We're here to grow as people and as as, as practitioners. So yeah. let's not let's not be the guys who are like a, a world champion after one fight. Let's Let's stay humble. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, <laughs> man. Ran, I'm yeah. out of questions now, dude. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. This has been uh, one of the most fun Friday nights I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. Hey, if yeah. people want to reach out to you, where can they find you? Uh, I'm very available on Instagram. My Instagram mm-hmm. is uh, bara emil, B-A-R-A dot E-M-I-L. Uh, I have a Facebook. Uh, and if you're in Sweden, if you're in the Stockholm area, you want to swing by Naka Dojo, shoot me a message and, and we can talk. And if you just want to talk about training or e- like an ecological approach or anything basically related to martial arts, hit me up. I'm I'm available. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll have to find me on Tinder or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gotcha, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, thanks so much for coming on again dude thanks so much for having me it's been really fun talking to you man thanks so much for listening to the combat learning podcast if you enjoyed this episode remember to leave us a review on apple Podcasts or google Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice it really helps us out finally this episode including the intro music is produced by micah peacock thanks in advance and i'll see you on the next episode